this is only my second meeting. I got appointed in April um, That's hard by, to by the governor. Yeah, and it's great to already be back here and meeting so many folks because, I, like I said, when I first um, joined the council, I don't have the answers to everything. I'm not an expert in everything, but it's so great to even learn from you folks what's happening federally, locally, um, from the other council members, finding out what's happening in their own mm -hmm. parts of their community. And it's just good education. And I don't think the average North Carolinian or the average American knows how significant um, challenges folks face with developmental disabilities, yeah. for example. How has being a part of the council impacted how you look at legislation? Well, absolutely. I personally believe that government should work for people. Our budgets should uh, reflect our values and you should really put people first. Um, and, and that's the biggest thing, like making sure they have quality access to healthcare. Uh, when we talk about the folks with dealing with IDD issues, being able to live independent, productive lives. What role can government play so that folks can take care of their own lives productively? Mm -hmm. Which is why it's so great to have an organization like this that is really dedicated in making sure that everyone in our state with a developmental disability has a voice mm -hmm. at our state level. And I think that's part of what, as the council, that we have the opportunity to do, which is, I mean, Eric and I work really hard to try to bring the most relevant state and federal information to the council, but we also depend on the council members to bring us the, exactly what you're saying, from the, from the ground and from where they're living in the community mm -hmm. to bring those issues up to us so we can see that whole picture. Because um, I think you're, you're talking about it being local, I think we try to emphasize that with the folks when we're working with the council is that their, their voice is what drives us to try to figure out what's going on at the policy level. Um, what would you want citizens to know about how important their voice is in, in the policy making process? So all politics is local. Your local government has tremendous impact on you. And I know a lot of folks talk about, especially on holiday times, like politics doesn't matter and I want to stay, you know, apolitical, but it governs your entire life. Um, because when we don't pay attention to what's happening in your local government, it has a significant impact on your life every single day. So that's what I always tell folks, you know, you need to really pay attention to what's happening in your local school boards, county commissions, city councils, and of course your state assembly. Um, everybody likes to focus on presidential elections every four years. That's where you get the biggest turnout. Earlier we talked about how sexy it is every four years to, you know, people want to get out and vote and decide, hey, are you going to support the incumbent or not? Um, but the governor, the General Assembly, has a significant impact on you when it comes to how much we're paying our teachers, our state employees, when we're talking about access to health care. This is the North Carolina Council on Developmental Disabilities. We've talked about the lack of funding for transportation, affordable housing, innovation waivers, like these, all these types of uh, issues have significant impact on your state um, and your family's well-being and your community's well-being. So I always tell folks, um, don't just necessarily sit back and stick your name on one of those cut and paste emails that you send to your legislator, uh, because a lot of my constituents have a significant impact on me when they um, attempt to reach out, when they write a, write a handwritten letter. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna see those more often than the, the, the cut and paste email or when they're calling me and they want to speak with me directly or I've had folks who set up coffee meetings in our Senate district yeah. and they want to meet with us because we meet with folks who have interest in government corporations all the time they'll set appointments in our offices and they meet with us face to face but the people have to take charge of their lives and really make a concentrated effort of meeting with their legislators getting to know who they are and telling them what you care about and I think that when you have people who have multiple understandings of populations, I think that that's really valuable. And I think that you provide something really critical here to the council, but then back to the legislature, right? Yeah. Because when, when we implement a law or a policy and it works this way in Charlotte and this way in Raleigh and some a, a different way um, yeah. in more rural regions, yeah. that's really important information that you can then yeah. you're able to bring back and um, or it works for most people but it's excluding people with intellectual and right. developmental disabilities right. which is what we're you know trying to get that feedback to to make right. sure that we're that the decisions we're making are promoting the goals of the council in terms of the community living part. So we always think there's always a, a quick solution to everything um, and this is why public hearings are so important mm -hmm. this is why civic engagement you the people getting involved in your local government, reaching out to organizations like the council, getting the information that you need, that's how you create good government. Mm -hmm. And we just gotta have uh, an open perspective and continue that dialogue yeah. to figure out what's the best interest of our state.